In this session of Look at the Book, we tackle another perplexing verse in 1 Peter. There just happens to be a cluster of these right here in the neighborhood. And the question I want to ask is, how does Christ's sufferings relate to our ceasing from sin? And we'll go about answering it by by looking at the immediate wording and then some subsequent wording here in this verse and the verse that follows. And then we'll circle back up and look at uh, verse 318 and we'll look at 224. And, uh, and then we'll do a risky thing. We'll go over and look at Romans, Romans 6, verse 7 in particular. So that's, that's where we're going in trying to answer the question, how does Christ's suffering relate to my ceasing from sin. So, Father, I do want to cease from sin. I want to be done with sinning to whatever measure it's possible for a person in this age to be. And and so help me and help all of us to make good insight here, good discoveries, and, and grow in our freedom from sinning. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. Now we'll do another session of look at the book on on what that what that arming involves and what that way of thinking is and how that battle takes shape. We'll look at that later. But for right now, the question is Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, because for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, what does that mean? That's what we want to tackle. What in the world? What suffering is being referred to here? Whoever, that's us Christians, whoever suffers in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, I have friends, <laughs> both of them have written commentaries on this book who take a position that I, I, I want to I wanna understand it and grasp it. Let me try to explain it to you and, and tell you why I'm stumbling. Um, they point forward now, these are the next verses, to this. For the time that, it, that suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry, with respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery and they malign you. For, so the time, time that is past is enough for doing all these sins. So you stop doing them. In fact, you have stopped doing them. They're surprised and they're maligning you. And they say, this is the suffering. This is the suffering. Back here. Whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So that suffering that you're now encountering because of your commitment to righteousness shows that you have ceased from sin. So here's, here's a quote. Um, they should prepare themselves to suffer, seeing the commitment to suffer, seeing that the commitment to suffer, seeing the commitment to suffer as evidence that they have broken with the life of sin. So a commitment to suffer is evidence they have broken with a life of sin is a paraphrase of whoever has suffered has ceased from sin. And for the life of me, I cannot make these words turn into those words. A commitment to suffer is evidence that you've broken with a life of sin being a paraphrase of Whoever has suffered, really suffered, not just has a commitment to suffer, has ceased from sin. I I just, (laughs) maybe so. Maybe that's what these mean. But my, oh my, that seems strained to me. So let me try out another possible interpretation with you. Compare first this phrase, um... Christ suffered in the flesh and 
um, I suffer in the flesh, and this referring to the death of Christ. Just a few verses earlier, Christ also suffered once, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. So put to death in the flesh seems very close to uh, suffered in the flesh here. So this might mean, in view of that, since Christ died when he suffered and suffered in the flesh is very close to died uh, in the flesh or was put to death in the flesh, therefore whoever has suffered in the flesh might mean whoever has died to the flesh or died in respect to the flesh. And then here's another link, 224. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so this is Christ's suffering, that we might die to sin. So here's Christ's sufferings resulting in my death to sin. So I'm going back here and see that that would be a confirmation that a, a, a Petrine, not just a Pauline, but a Peter understanding of suffering in the flesh would be that when Christ bore my sins in his body on the flesh on the tree he did it so that I would in union with him and in practice die in respect to my flesh and then here's the risky move that everybody thinks you shouldn't do to see a parallel in Romans 6 6 and 7 We know that our old self was crucified with him. So I died when Christ died in order that my body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. And then here's the the key verse. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now hold that in your mind. Whoever has died has been set free from sin, and go back here and see whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, and I've already shown from 3.18 and 2.24 that it's not a Pauline idea, but a Peter idea that this suffering in the flesh here is a, a death in the flesh to sin. So, my suggestion, and, and, um, I could be wrong on this, and those guys could be absolutely right, is that uh, Peter is saying uh, Christ, since Christ suffered in the flesh, have the same way of thinking, namely recognize that you have suffered with him in the flesh, and having died to sin with Christ, you have ceased from sin. Now, what, what makes this not a very big disagreement between us is that the outcome, it seems to me, is virtually the same because I think this, this, this way of thinking here, which we're going to deal with in another session, this way of thinking here is, is to say, since I have died with Christ, I therefore hate sin. I'm dead to sin. I am committed not to sin. And so, yes, when I am maligned down here for not participating in these sins, yes, that is part of what is implied in this text, that I have suffered in the flesh with Christ. Therefore, I have in principle completely ceased from sin by being united to him and in practice armed myself with a way of thinking that results in my willingness to forsake worldly pleasures and be maligned for it.